727 in the Calumet region. I'm Jim Deedla, host of Jed in the region, hanging out here on what is not so bad of a Tuesday morning. Congressman Pete Foskoski is in the uh, studio. How are you doing, Congressman? I'm doing very good. Thank you very much for having me on today. And uh, he joins uh, Verly Suggs and I. And uh, we're going to just kind of take a tour about what things are going on around the Calumet region and around in Washington. Just get in today. How long have you been uh, around? I have been here since uh, Friday. was supposed to be in on uh, Thursday afternoon, but uh, Congress uh, delayed uh, our departure. Uh, leave very shortly back for Washington because uh, we're trying to complete uh, consideration of the fiscal year 2016 uh, appropriations measure for the funding of the government. Uh, my understanding is uh, negotiations negotiations continue, uh, but that they probably will have a bill filed tonight, and we will vote on it on Thursday. But uh, we start voting uh, early this evening. So no government shutdown? Uh, it is my anticipation, as I sit here, uh, that there will not be, uh, and that these negotiations will be successful, and that uh, the bill will be passed on Thursday. But uh, I appreciate you raising the question because as someone who has been on that committee, and that is the committee that decides how to spend what we call discretionary money, investment in this country. Uh, the subcommittee I'm ranking on is defense appropriations, $572 billion, all the intelligence agencies, defense, but also it's highways, it's education, it's health. And uh, we have really, that is Congress, <laughs> has got to come to grips that if there are issues you want to debate, and I would hope you have a civil debate about it, that's terrific, and we ought to find some reasonable middle ground. We ought to be running the government day to day with some predictability, not only for those who work at the federal government, uh, but people such as public officials in Hammond, Lake County, the state of Indiana, contractors, God forbid, that do work for public entities. On defense, uh, we have uh, people from other countries that we have relationships with, had representatives of the French government in the office last week. Well, what are you going to do? And from time to time, as you point out, well, let's just shut down the government because I want to hold my breath. Or our fiscal year actually started October 1st we should have, with some predictability, told people almost three months ago, here is what the budget is going to be. We have had across the board cuts with sequestration. Uh, again, whatever that level is, let us make a decision, let us have some predictability, because this is also wasting money because of that uncertainty. Uh, there will be, I think, some certainty by the end of this week, and that is good news, and I would hope people get serious about this budget process. Again, we have been doing this now essentially for seven years, and I am just completely frustrated with this process because the people I work with on the committee, we want to get our work done um, in both parties, which you don't see in the media because we don't get in a knockdown, drag out fight. We do our business. You don't see us every day. There are people that work together. It's very frustrating really? for both of us. I've never heard of that, actually. Hey, we're talking to Congressman Pete Vosklosky. Don't wait till the end, guys. Get your phone calls in now, 209-845-1100. He wants to hear from you, wants to hear your comments. Before we go on okay. to talk a little bit more about that, Congressman, I want to thank you for spending some time with my grandmother on, uh, and for coming to our party for our of, of the opening of the studios right. here. We appreciated that. But my grandmother was just tickled pink that you sat and talked to her. The only thing that I noticed in that conversation is that you're typically the charmer wherever you go. I think you got out charmed that oh, moment. Oh, are you? Why was I having that conversation? I, I was charmed to death. Yeah, she, she's a charmer. There's wonderful another. Wonderful woman. And. You think about your grandmother, and uh, I talked to her about my father, who will be 100 years old Wow! on December 26th. Former mayor of Gary. Former mayor of Gary. <laughs> and you think about all of the events of their lives and the things they've seen and the experiences they have. Uh, people like all of us should pleasure in having that opportunity to just have that information shared in their perspective. It was delightful. Yeah, it was she, wonderful. She, she, I, we got pictures of that. You could just tell by the pictures that she's charming him. This is not one of your mo she's oh, she's yeah, controlling absolutely. that moment. <laughs> absolutely. I know that we got Verley's got a bunch of stuff, but people are already lining up to talk to you. Let's go through them. Let's go to Granola Bob right now. Bob, go ahead, say your question and your comment. 
take an, an observation and a question based on that observation, Congressman. The steel industry in northwest Indiana is getting the crap kicked out of it, and it has been for quite some time due to uh, cheap imported steel. Kind of wondering where the government's been all these years. They seem to come in after all the damage is done and say, yep, damage has been done. We're going to do something now. Where, where was the breakdown in the government in watching the, the cheap steel that was being dumped in this nation for years? It didn't happen overnight, Congressman. Who dropped the ball, and how did it get to this position so quickly? All right, hang up and listen, Bob. Thank you so much. Bob, I appreciate the question, and we are not in this situation quickly, but I would uh, make a, po a couple of very positive observations. So one, since 1985, the state of Indiana has produced more steel than any other state in the country. That has been true every year, including this past year, and I'm very proud of that fact. The second observation I would make, and I'm very proud of this, and it goes to the uh, intellect, it goes to the skill of our workers, our managers in Northwest Indiana. Uh, we do it more efficiently in Northwest Indiana and in America than any place else on the planet Earth. No one else makes a ton of steel with less than two hours of labor per ton. Uh, which is one reason why we have seen a decline in employment because of the growth of that efficiency. As far as the problem you rightfully point out, and that is the trade problems we have, uh, it is not uh, a recent phenomenon, unfortunately. Uh, it has been dominant uh, since the 1970s. Uh, and the government, in a bipartisan fashion, administrations, Democrat and Republican, uh, have failed not only the steel industry, but manufacturing in putting forth some of these trade agreements. Uh, we're, we're now doing agreements with countries that, for all practical purposes, have slave labor markets, uh, no environmental uh, regulations to speak of, and who have their governments subsidize their industry. Having said that, uh, this year has been a banner year legislatively in the Congress for the steel industry. I think I was on the program earlier this year and in June of this year. Uh, the Steel Caucus that acts in a bipartisan fashion was successful in having enforcement legislation passed for steel and for other manufacturings that is going to make a substantive difference as far as the enforcement of our laws. One of the problems is we win most of our trade cases. But you'd be correct in your question of, okay, 18 to 24 months later, my plant is closed, I've lost, and the opposing country pays a fine, and now they have the market to themselves. Now, if a country doesn't want to cooperate with our investigation, we don't turn over economic information to you, we don't turn over legal information, the law that we passed in June says we will impute those numbers. We will impute the law. Now, you can either play fair or we're going to play fair. Additionally, uh, in many instances, and it came up in the Steel Caucus again this year, is you essentially have to be dead laying out in the street on Indianapolis Boulevard to prove you've been injured. We can now, under the law that was passed in June, impute that we know how this song is going to turn out. We know how this story is going to end by the events that have taken place. We can impute that injury at this point in time. Additionally, uh, this past Friday, and it was one of the bills we were voting on that delayed my uh, arrival in Indiana, <clears throat> we had additional legislation passed in the House. It's now pending in the Senate, and I do believe between now and the end of the year it will be passed by the Senate. But essentially, it gives the border security agents more authority and specific direction that you have got to start these enforcement actions on the dock. Don't wait for these materials to hit middle America and six months later we start some type of enforcement action and there are now time constraints on them to do that. So we still have a long way to go and I regret that we have to fight every day. I'm happy to do the fight, but we have to make things in this country. And I'm going to have to make you move on. There's a lot of people that want to hit. We're going to hit it. Let's go to uh, Kevin from Gary. Kevin, you're up next. Go. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Congressman Biskowski. I was wondering, are you still working with the mayor on getting more funding for Gary Transit to start the buses early on Saturday and run late on Saturday and run later at night during the week? I got a letter from you a couple of months ago. Uh, yes, we are. And as a matter of fact, met with... All right, thanks. Thank you, Kevin, for calling. Thanks. Wow. I know Kevin. 
I uh, actually met with uh, Karen uh, Freeman Wilson, uh, Mayor uh, Freeman Wilson, uh, this past week. Uh, she uh, is doing everything possible, as is the transit district, uh, to secure additional funds and to expand their service. Uh, the wonderful thing about the Gary Transit uh, District right now is about 10 years ago, the federal government was going to essentially take them over or close them down, given their circumstances. Today, and you look back this last year, the transit district has expanded. Uh, and they now serve other communities, including Hammond in northwest Indiana. Is that, the, is, that the, that is that the system. agency that can take over all of this? Uh, I wouldn't say take over, but uh, the mayor has also been in negotiations uh, with Mayor Copeland, uh, with Trustee Mervan, who have existing systems, to talk about how can we work better together uh, to coordinate our systems, to look where there's weaknesses, where can we fill gaps, so we can improve a bus service regionally in northwest Indiana. And part of that, as Kevin asked, is to secure funds for that good work in coordinating their efforts and growing that system. The system is larger than it was a year and a half ago, and that's wonderful news for all of us. And I have to say this because, Kevin, I, I know Kevin. He rides those buses. And people say, oh, the buses are empty. Kevin used that bus to get to college. He used that bus to get to his job in Meyer. So he has been a strong proponent of riding those buses. And we talk about the trains expanding and that sort of thing. People don't recognize the fact that this is a means for people out of poverty if there is transportation to jobs. Right. It's two jobs, as you point out. It's two education. Uh, it's two physicians. I may be too young to have a driver's license. I may be a bit older, uh, not want to drive a car. Some people don't want to drive cars. They want to use transit. And in talking about the trains, really, we're talking about a coordinated system where everything works together. It's not either or. It's let's do this together. And for those who continue to castigate the community of Gary, I've I've had it. I've had it a long time. And I'm happy Kevin asked about the bus because here's a system the city of Gary Transit District runs. And they do it well by every barometer the federal government has. And they are expanding that service. And the city of Gary is serving other individuals and other communities throughout Lake County now. And I'm very proud of that. I think we all should be. All right, let's keep it moving. 219-845-1100. Let's go to Max from Hammond. Max, you're on with Congressman Pete Visklosky. Go ahead. Good morning, Congressman. Um, Good morning. I'm one of the proponents of the uh, South Shore expansion. I worked in Chicago for a while, took the South Shore. And people just don't realize how beneficial it is when you look at the western suburbs. Uh, one thing I wanted you to say to people, and I hear these naysayers all the time, well, we should use that money for something else, and people don't realize is that this money that you get is earmarked specifically for transit expansion, correct? That is correct. And people don't realize that that money can't be used for anything else, right? You are absolutely correct, and in the legislation we talked about a bit earlier in the program, uh, there is about $1.9 billion dollars uh, for the Department of Transportation to spend on transit construction during the coming year. And you are absolutely correct, and I appreciate you bringing that point up, that many of these are dedicated pots of money. There are other pots of money uh, to uh, provide investments in the existing line. I would also point out, because one of the other efforts here is to provide double tracks to reduce travel time along the existing South Shore Line. And again, uh, those are dedicated funds. You're not taking money from anything else. And from my perspective, uh, those are our federal taxes. That $1.9 billion came from someplace. It came from all of us who pay federal taxes. We ought to have a return of some of those dollars to invest in the economy and grow it in northwest Indiana. And it's a one-for-one -one match. Every dollar we put up, we get 100% return. And that's before the economic benefit of expansion and improvement of the existing line. 219-845-1100, you want to talk to Congressman. Follow up? Congressman, um, speaking of transportation, and when you look at transportation around the world, I think a lot of times that we're behind the eight ball when we look at the innovation. I was watching a program about Colombia, Medellin, which was known for the Colombian drug laws, now has a m wonderful transportation system that's bringing people out of poverty poverty, that's improving the whole Medellin community that I say we need to go and look at 
considering alternative means of transportation. They're using gondolas, streetcars, like in Europe, like in Europe mm -hmm. that sort of thing. When we look at the South Shore expansion, are we looking at innovative ways to provide that train service to Dyer and beyond? Oh, we are, and again, I would include the existing line because everyone here is familiar with Chicago. Everyone's familiar with Lake Port or Lepore County. Imagine what our communities look like throughout our entire region. If you get on a train from Michigan City and you're in Chicago within 60 minutes, you think about the benefit with a transfer station in the Hammond community. You think about all those other stations along the line, that entire e economy comes out here you're absolutely correct and then in the longer term you take that service out to Lowell you take it out to Valpo that's the future I tell people a hundred hundred twenty five years ago Morgan Rockefeller they invested here because they knew they could Carnegie make money. all of them Carnegie, yes. all of them did that and it's been fabulous for our region we're still making more steel than anybody else but we do it so well it's not a job growth industry. It's time for our generation to do exactly what those men did and let's invest in that new economy. And people forget there's a large degree of manufacturing going on in Chicago. There's manufacturing going on in Northside. Maybe it doesn't quite look like East Chicago and Gary, but it's pharmaceuticals, it's high tech. You think about your location here on the Purdue campus. You think about a stop here. You think about the research that uh, professors are doing, the graduate students are doing here. This economy is going to grow, and there's going to be a reason for young people to stay and to come here. It's to get people to move here to live here, and it's going to be a fabulous, fabulous uh, process. 219-845-1100. Mad Mac, what do you think about that? Well, all I know is that there's definitely a great need for a train because of the disparaging amount of poverty that is down in Dyer and St. John, where all these lily white rich people live. They definitely need a train to get them out of those rich houses they live so that it, hopefully a train will turn their neighborhoods into the same mess that Pete has promoted in Gary and Merrillville. It's a disaster, Pete. You got to wake up, buddy. Because money is dedicated for trains, you need to unearmark it and do it to things that will help those communities grow. Hold on the a second. What, what exactly? Dyer. Hold on a second, Mad Mac. So you want them to unearmark the money for the train, and what else? What's your other comments or question? Invest it in things. Listen, rip the school systems in Maryville and Gary to shreds. They're terrible. Excuse okay. me. You know what? First of all, you no, know, man, 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 you you give so hey, much Bert? out there that is so untruthful. You don't know anything about the school system in Maryville. We have one of the best school systems, so don't even you're go there. And and as far as listening. tearing it and ripping it, you don't know what you're talking about. Move on. The Thanks people. a lot. Well, he he brought up a good point. It's the same point that Max said. That people want the money that is there, a couple hundred million dollars for the train to be moved to other areas. Uh, as one of our earlier callers mentioned, there are dedicated funds for the Department of Education. That's one of the bills we're considering in the appropriations bill. There is monies for highways, for bridge construction, for harbor maintenance. In that bill, were none for Klein Avenue, though. When we talk about bridge construction, that, uh, we should communicate with the state on that. <laughs> uh, we should continue those. Although it is my understanding, there is now an agreement with the. Uh, well, it's a private Chicago contractor and a private yes, contractor yes, uh -huh. uh, to do that. But I would make two observations. One, I would join uh, my friend here, and I am sick and tired of people maligning the city of Gary, which is my hometown, which he just did. And my current hometown, Maryville, you're absolutely right on the schools. And Mayor Freeman Wilson and the council and people who have companies and who have nonprofits in that city are killing themselves to bring it back. And there is progress being made. Last time I looked, there's new university construction taking place in the city of Gary at 35th and Broadway. We're having demolition of facilities. Uh, the mayor has, uh, again, uh, in conjunction with the transit district, provided service for others outside of Gary after all these years of talking about the airport. The runway is done in the city of Gary, and that's going to be one of our crown jewels. Having said that, there is also implicit in the comment that was made uh, about all of the northern cities, 
all of the northern cities. And I'm also tired of people denigrating Hammond by implying they can't wait to get out and take a train to Dyer. Why do you want to leave Hammond, Indiana? Why do you want to leave Hammond, Indiana? I think Hammond, Indiana is a great place. That's why I worked so hard and had a long battle with federal judges to have $45 million invested in downtown Hammond for a federal building. That's why I secured funds for an overpass on Homan Avenue in downtown Hammond because I believe there is a future there. That's why we had within the last year a ribbon cutting ceremony on sewer construction. That's why we were at a groundbreaking at Wolf Lake for the cleaning up of Wolf Lake and you look at what a terrific attractive facility that is in conjunction with Lost March. The city of Hammond is proceeding with federal and state authorities on Chicago Avenue at one point in time. You look at one of the largest college campuses in the state of Indiana and the research being done, where is it? Purdue, Purdue University. All right, you all right. look at the Grand Calumet being cleaned up. Why would you want to leave Hammond? They're on the cusp of moving forward if we do transit right and if we continue to recapture that lakeshore and do projects like Wolf Lake. I'm proud of Hammond. Ryan wants me to break, but I want to follow up with one other thing here while you're a little fired up. If Perhaps Mad Mac is representative of something in your district, which is a big district. You got a lot of suburban and even a lot of rural to your district, mm -hmm. but you also have a lot of urban areas. And just from being on the air here day in and day out, I, we hear it every day. We've already heard it before you were here. There's a disconnect between these three urban cities, and you could probably throw Whiting in there, four urban cities, and the cholera communities and those are two disparate populations within your district. How can you get those two areas to get along and get big things done? It is happening with the train expansion. It is happening with bus consolidation. It is happening with lakeshore development. Uh, I'm told there were about 13,000 people. I don't know for a fact. I wasn't there. But I'm told there were 13,000 people in Whiting, Indiana, which is a lakeshore community. Has, the last time I looked, not exclusively a Caucasian population living in it. Did all those 13,000 people in a city of 4,600 people, are they all in Whiting? No, they came to Whiting because they can come to northern community and have a good time. Last time I looked, Hammond has a festival during the summer. Everybody who shows up at Wolf Lake, are they just living in Hammond because nobody else wants to come to Hammond, Indiana? I had a meeting with public officials in East Chicago yesterday. There's new construction on Main Street, on Chicago Avenue in East Chicago today. There's demolition taking place. The mayor's done a terrific job. The mayor said you're on his favorites on his phone. I don't have, he's <laughs> one of my, he knows everybody's my, the mayor has done a terrific job. And Gary City Council and the mayor is supporting the train expansion because they understand the future is cooperating with each other. Why did Gary expand the bus system out of the city of Gary and into him so students could get an education at Purdue University? It, it, it is happening. Is it perfect today? No. It is light years better, Jeff, than it was 20 years ago. And there is that cooperation. There is that sense that we've got to do something. Maryville. Maryville was mentioned here. The train doesn't go through Maryville. I live in Turkey Creek. That train is never going to go through Maryville in the first But we're supporting future, it. But they're supporting it. Or Valpo. Or Valpo. <laughs> or New Chicago. New Chicago is supporting it. New Chicago. Is it going to happen? Yes, it is. And, and what I'm saying is, why is New Chicago making an investment in, if I could, the gentleman used Dyer? Gee, I, the last time I looked, New Chicago has economic problems as well because they realize we have to grow this entire economy because the average person living in the community may be working in another community. Lake County population makes us the 35th largest city in the United States of America. We ought to start acting like it. And again, there is that cooperation going on. And I do think it is a responsibility myself to bring people together in this era. You look at some of the national media, some of the national campaigns where people try deliberately to get us to dislike each other. 
is to just keep sitting down and having conversations. And listen, we have so much more in common than we don't. And it is working. Highland Town Board last night voted to support the train and begin contributing 12% of their economic development tax. The train is not going to go in Highland. But you know where that expansion is going to go? Hammond. The first part of that expansion is Hammond, Indiana. That's a northern city, and you got a suburban community, okay, it's in North Township, supporting that initiative. Lowell is supporting that investment in Hammond, Indiana. So in answer to your question, that is beginning to be a very good picture in Northwest Indiana. And uh, speaking of which, uh, Bernie Zeman of the Town Council of Highland follows up on this. Hey, we'll be right back. Get your last questions in for the Congressman, AM 1230 WJOB in Hammond, Indiana. Speak with people who have grown up in the Calumet region who understand the area and the type of insurance coverage you need, then give Ogren Insurance a call. Ogren Insurance has been providing both personal and commercial insurance since 1947. For more information, call us at 219-933-0076 or come see us at 6929 Holman Avenue in Hammond, Indiana. Log on to ogreninsurance.com today and get the right coverage you need. If you've been arrested or convicted of a crime in the state of Indiana, listen up. You need legal counsel. Doesn't it make sense to call an attorney who not only knows the law, but who knows the system? I'm Nicole Bennett, a former deputy Lake County prosecutor. I do know the system and how to help you with your criminal case. From traffic tickets to cleaning up your driving record to obtaining specialized driving privileges under the new 2015 Indiana law and misdemeanor and felony charges. And as many of you have experienced, I can even have your criminal record erased. Call me at Westland and Bennett in Sherrillville, 219-440-7550. Again, 219-440-7550. Always leave a waiting. I always leave it down. She should come my way. I always turn around. AM 1230 WJOB in Hammond, Indiana. Coming up next, it'll be the town of Highland with Eddie Dabrowski and Bernie Zeman. They made a big announcement last night at the town council meeting. We'll get to that. But right now, let's take a look at traffic. 294 around the city is moving okay. 80 going east and west. Your problem is still the Bishop Ford up the gut of the Southland. It's still a little bit iffy on that area. It's worse than it was. I don't know what, then at 630, I was surprised how good it was. Now it's not so good. As a matter of fact, I would not go that way at all. See if you can go up the Skyway or the toll road right now. Bishop Ford is bad. The southern end of the Dan Ryan is bad. And then as you approach... Uh, the Jane Byrne, that's bad, so don't go that way, all right? Borman looks good, though, I-65, U.S. 30, Klein Avenue. Laborers Local 41 is proud to sponsor the traffic here, as are the iron workers and the electricians union, because, of course, this is a union-built studio. Taking a look at weather, brought to you by an attorney you can trust, DomingasLawyer.com. That would be a high of 45 today, cloudy and mild tomorrow, a morning shower to and a high of 53. Congressman... Pete Visklaski is in the studios right now. We got him for about five more minutes. We're going to make really good use of that time. Verley gets the first shot. If we don't get to all your phone calls, I'm sorry. He'll do it again. I'll be real quick. We had a caller a few months ago call in crying and blaming you for the decline of the steel industry. She was a... uh, the wife of a retired steel worker. She blamed you for NAFTA. I'm not like Trump. When someone says something incorrect, I want to clarify it. So will you please explain NAFTA and whether or not you're responsible for NAFTA? I voted against NAFTA, and I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to make sure people understand that. Uh, I voted against CAFTA, which uh, dealt with South uh, Central uh, countries in America. Uh, I voted against most favored nation status for China. Uh, I voted against Fast Track Authority this past June to give the administration an ability to negotiate this Trans-Pacific Partnership Act, which I think is very dangerous for the industry. Uh, So I appreciate you letting me make the record very clear on that and do, as vice chair of the caucus, fight for the industry and all manufacturing every day. People need to make a living wage in this country. Let's go to MX on line one. MX, did you hear that? He voted against NAFTA. Yes, I'm going to tell you something he did vote for. On September 15, 
On September 10th, 2015, Congressman, you voted for the Iran nuclear arms deal that freed up $150 billion of assets back to Iran. Why did you support terrorism? All right, there you go. Uh, you're misconstruing my vote. Uh, the fact is that uh, I did support the administration's agreement to reach with other European and international partners with Iran. It did not free up $150 billion of terrorist money in Iran. That is absolutely and patently false. Uh, the fact is, uh, this agreement, supported by people such as former Senator Richard Luger, uh, gives us a chance to have a nation walk away from developing nuclear weapons. And there is a very strong verification process that is governed internationally. Uh, we have regular briefings on the Defense Appropriations Committee to make sure we monitor this situation. Uh, I would acknowledge that Iran continues to foster terrorism internationally, uh, but I also believe now we have to do negotiations on that particular aspect. And as far as the Middle East, would point out that you now have negotiations going on today as we meet in Riyadh uh, among those opposition groups in Syria to see if there can be some consensus so international negotiations can begin in Vienna after the first of the year. Uh, military action, I think, has proven since 2001 is not going to solve every international problem we face. It is part of the solution for those who are dangerous to us and who we have to eliminate that danger. Will it escalate in Syria? Also, uh, Syria has escalated. Syria Will it escalate escalated. more in your mind? Uh, should it escalate more? It should. Well, the conflict has escalated. Uh, we today now uh, have special forces not in combat in Syria but to help with intelligence, help with targeting, help with military, if you would, discipline and order. Uh, airstrikes on an international basis continue. Again, I had French representatives in the office this past week uh, because military action is part of that solution. But bringing opposition groups, and they are numerous, and they are disparate, and it's going to be very difficult. Uh, to try to have some middle ground so that you can have negotiations as to what the government of Syria would look like if Assad is gone. But as far as Iran, that is a verifiable agreement. You have a nation now that will not pursue nuclear weapons, and I congratulate the President and Secretary Kerry for undertaking those difficult negotiations with other countries such as Germany and France and England. We need you for an hour next time. Yeah, we, this we, we is, got, a half an hour is too quick. We can't talk about the climate accord in Paris. We can't talk about ISIS moving into Libya. There's so back. many important issues we need to discuss. We got to hit one more. Big Rich has been waiting for about half an hour. Big Rich, you're on with Congressman Vyskoski. Your final phone call. Go ahead. Hey, good morning, Congressman. A uh, quick question, and I'll hang up. You know, with us letting all these able-bodied uh, refugees in um, that could be building their own nation, we we still lack taking care of our own veterans and. Do you ever see a day where the VA hospitals will go by the wayside since they're farces and that the common um, combatant or people who have problems can just go to any regular hospital and, and get the treatment they need instead of being put on waiting list? Right. Thank you. I appreciate the question. Not in the foreseeable future. I think you'll continue to see the uh, Veterans Administration uh, medical facilities continue. Obviously, we have the Benjamin Clinic in Northwest Indiana. Uh, it is clear uh, that the services provided, and particularly the consideration of casework for those with disabilities and other problems, have got to be aggressively and urgently addressed. They're working on that, but we have progress that still needs to be made. Uh, I have long supported, and we had discussions on this program about veterans' choice for those who have to wait more than 30 days for an appointment uh, to get assistance at private facilities so they can get the help they need. They deserve it. They're veterans. And in the cases of those who are seeking that assistance, uh, they have been hurt uh, in the defense of this country and have worked very, very diligently. And that has been an improvement as far as providing that option for people who are backed up in the system. Uh, so some of that private care in private facilities is now available. Uh, I think you'll continue to see, if you would, some movement in that area, but it won't completely switch to a private system anytime in the near future. Jim, you got to take the last call. 
Laura Ingram can wait. <laughs> hey, uh, you're on the air. What's going on? Yeah, Congressman. Uh, one of the things uh, on this train, last time I looked, uh, 40% of the residents of Hammond were below the poverty level. Now, one of the things one of your prior calls didn't mention was that uh, in order to do this thing, you want to take like something like $27 million of Hammond discretionary money for urban development and throw it on this train. Either, so Hammond's either going to have to cut back on projects or raise taxes to make up the difference. Personally, I'd rather get my street fixed here. I don't need to take a train to Dyer. All right, you, you know, got it. You know, hey, Lee, is, Lee, Lee, Lee you got it. I got you. I got you. Hammond sacrifices to do this train. There are no new taxes because of this initiative. And the fact is the request being made from communities such as Hammond is to take a portion of a quarter percent tax that is dedicated under the ordinance passed by the Lake County government for economic development. There's no question roads to need to be repaired, curves need to be repaired, sewers need to be repaired. Whatever we've done for the last generation and a half has still left us with potholes. And I have an article in front of me from the Times newspaper that Lake County again, Lake County again, posted the largest loss of population in the state of Indiana last year. Fixing potholes has not transformed our economy. The train will, and it's for the very people who are living at life's margins to give them a chance to see that transit-oriented development by those stations such as this Purdue community in Hammond, that transfer station, or God forbid, getting them to a good paying job in the city of Chicago and bringing that economy out here. That Thanks. was my thought exactly. One question. What is it like, the new speaker? No, no, we got to go. We got to go. We, we, have, we have a schedule here, and the congressman has the schedule also. Thank you so much, congressman for coming in. We appreciate it so much. And I think Verley's right. We need a little more time next time. I apologize to everybody who could not get on and waited for uh, half an hour and couldn't get on the air. Verley, as always, you rock. Way to go. Hey, take care. All right. AM 1230 WJOB in Hammond, Indiana.